Happy New Year, everyone! It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun. I hope you have a wonderful 2021. Um, welcome back to the channel. And I figured we're gonna start the new new year out hitting it hard. And I'm gonna show you how to reposition your design after maybe um, you shut down the machine or the machine shut down itself. You know that happens. Or um, you decided you were you couldn't stay up another hour because you were trying to stay up all night and finish that quilt. Um, now, raise your hand if you have ever left your machine on all night because you were too scared to reposition that design in the morning. Or you stayed up all night because you had to finish the quilt so you didn't have to reposition that um, design. Or you thought the quilt was going to take you four hours, but it took you six hours and you didn't make dinner and ha made everybody get takeout because I've done all of those, um, because we all start somewhere. So this video is going to show you how to open that design. So we've already set our area, our quilts loaded. Maybe we quilted out row one and two and realized, oh, I'm not going to finish this tonight. Um, so this will show you how to open that, um, that design back up because hopefully you saved it. We always save it, the first thing to do before you start stitching and reposition that design in the right spot. Um, a uh, little housekeeping, please subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when the new videos drop. I try to do a video once a week with a quick tip or um, a project, something fun, something that um, I would like to do because I usually have to do them, right? Um, what else? Oh, follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, and that's S E W on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm Adam So Fun everywhere, so check me out. I tend to be a little bit fun. I'm a, I know I'm crazy, but that's that's part of my charm, maybe? I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna bring you along. We're gonna get to the machine so you can see what's going on in real time, and I will walk you through how to line that design back up. See you back here in a second. All right, so here is my Pro Stitcher tablet, and my machine's all ready to go. I have already stitched out this row i was with my buddy the other day my handy quilter buddy she bought her machine during the buddy program and we were doing some corners and borders and so i had this stitch we stitched this out and i turned this design into an edge to edge and i want to line the new design back up because this was two days ago so now i'm ready to um, stitch a few other rows so i could show you how to do it so I'm gonna come back here, just move my machine, or move my machine, move my machine close to me so it's comfortable. I, if you look, I'm gonna move the machine, or the, the uh, camera back down. This is at the very back of my throat. Anytime I need to work on the screen, I do it so I can have my machine as close to me as possible. So I'm not straining to touch that screen. And if you didn't know, this is uh, movable. So if you're shorter, you can tilt it down. If you're taller, you can tilt it up. I'm gonna tilt it towards the screen or towards the camera. So um, it might be tight, two hands, and just turn it one way or the other. Be careful, but you're not gonna break it. So I'm gonna open my design. I always save my edge-to-edge -edge designs as a workspace before I, um, I start stitching. And I save them as a workspace because it saves as a different file type. And I only have so many workspaces saved, it's a lot easier to find them. And this way I can also name them. So say I was doing um, Kim's quilt, I can say like Kim's flower quilt, and then I know which one it is. So I'm gonna open a workspace. This was the last one I worked on, so it's workspace 3544. I didn't actually change the name. And here is our flower design. So we've stitched out row one. So I have, I can line up row one. So this is kind of like, you came back the next morning and you opened your design. You already have a row stitched out, which is why you need to realign everything. So I'm going to, first, I'm going to move my, my design to my needle so I can be um, more comfortable. And I have the select tool selected. It's green, so I can just use my finger and kind of move it over there. And then I'll refresh my screen, which is the bottom house. So I'm going to find a, des a design element in this first row that I can find on my screen and on the quilt. I like to use a point if possible. I know there's some um, like circle meander doesn't have points because they're circles, but it does have some intersections. So I use an intersection on those because if I were, I'm gonna zoom in. If I tried to use a point on this curve, I could maybe find it, but it's gonna be a lot harder than if I just use maybe the point of that leaf. 
So I am going to use the point of this leaf and I'm going to move my crosshairs. Remember the crosshairs are our needle. I'm going to move the crosshairs right to that point. And if you want to be real specific, I can zoom in really far. Oops, I missed my zoom. I can zoom in really far. And these are like, I'm barely tapping the machine. And there, I'm close. This We're zoomed in so far that this is going to be close enough. When I get that point on the screen, and I'm going to hit the house so we can see, I'm going to hit drag. And you'll notice when I touch drag, it's going to turn green and then and the word's going to say drop. So if, um, if you have, as soon as you touch drag, it turns to drop. And now I am two leaves over from the left or the second leave over from the left. Now I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see. I have drag or I have drag selected so it says drop. Now I need to find that point on our line. Here's the thing. We're no longer looking at the screen. Everything on the screen is good. We don't need to touch it. We just need to find that point in our row. Uh, maybe you stitched out three rows, then you're looking at the bottom of row three. In my case, I stitched one, so I'm looking at the bottom of row one. And here's the point that we're looking for. So I'm going to move my machine so I can see my laser light. And I'm going to put my laser light right on that point. And when I do that, let's turn your back up to the screen. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tap drop. So now when I move my machine, you can see, I'm going to refresh the screen. You can see the design isn't moving anymore. Whereas when drag and drop were happening, when we were dragging it, um, it moved the design with it. So now everything is lined up, but I'm going to run a few checks. So I will move my um, crosshairs just close to this, uh, this point. And that's the first point. And I can come down and check it. Or, so I'm at the first point here and I'm at the first point here. So that looks good. Maybe I'm going to come over here and do the last one. So I'm at the last point here and I'm at the last point here and I'll zoom in so you can see that. Maybe that works better. There we go. So they line up there and there. I'll go back to the first one because we zoomed in and we're here and let's come over here and we're there so that is how you line up a design when you come back to it so you don't have to stay up all night and watch your machine all right everybody i hope that helped you out um if you are someone who was staying up all night because you didn't want to turn that machine off or left it on all night because you didn't want to leave it off or turn it off Believe me, you're not alone. I um, had this, I get this question a lot. So I wanted to make sure people knew how to do that. It's not very hard. It takes a second. You know, you're you're working on the screen and then working on the um, the quilt top. But once you get it, it's it makes everything so much easier because that's how you're going to do a lot of the applications when you're dragging and drop. That's the way I actually um, drag and drop when I'm doing edge to edges. Instead of doing the needle down, I just use the drag and drop. Same, same kind of similar thing. Um, I do have a video of the whole edge to, or a video series of the whole edge to edge process loading it. Um, I load the, I call it the burrito method because it makes it easy to understand for me. I like food. I like chocolate. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you have the most fabulous 2021 because anything's going to be better than 2020. Am I right? Um, and, um, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. No thumbs down. Not in 2021. It's all positivity going forward, right? Um, what else? Uh, make sure to check. Um, oh, follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, and that's S E W on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if I do any virtual teaching, I always post it there first, and then it's also going to be posted on my um, AdamSoFun.com, where you can check under the events tab. Um, if you did the December quilt along or stitch along, um, make sure you to post me or uh, tag me in your videos. I'd love to see your quilts. I just love those uh, quilts we did in December. And what else? Um, you know what? Happy stitching. Remember, at the end of the day, it's only quilting. We want to laugh and we want to have a good time. So we'll see you in the next video. Happy January. Happy New Year. 
Happy life, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye.